Okay, we're looking at a residential property which contains a multitude of known, obvious, and suspected container habitats for Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopictus. If you look at the area which is covered in dense vegetation, we don't know what's under there. There could be small plastic cups or bottles or perhaps a dog's water bowl, something like that that's holding water and, and mosquitoes are developing in it. As we look at the backyard of this property, we can see many obvious containers such as tires and trash and other things that just simply catch water. So this is a, really the kind of property where we would do Vectoback WDG backpack spray in order to control the development of these mosquitoes. Earlier, I paced the perimeter of this property and found it to be 45 feet wide by 130 feet deep. If we multiply those two numbers, we come up with 5,850 square feet. If we divide 5,850 square feet by the surface area of an acre, we come up with approximately 0.14 acres. Right away, I see a plastic bag, which is in the vegetation. Plastic bags are notorious for holding water. Many of these could be in this vegetation where we cannot see them and could be microhabitats for mosquito larvae. And also, if we look to the right in front of the porch, we can see there's a couple of waste tires which are well known for being sources of mosquito larvae. Looking at the extent of vegetation and visible habitats on this property, we would consider everything except the house to be habitat on this property. So looking at the size of the property and the size of the house, just a rough estimate would be that this is approximately 75% habitat. Okay, now we're in the back alley of the property looking in, and we can see that there have been a number of items dumped on this property that are ideal habitat for mosquito larvae, including the many, many waste tires, but also we have this piece of plastic to my left, which has small chambers in it, which are holding water and also our ideal mosquito larval habitat. Okay, the property that we were at in the field was 45 feet wide by 130 feet deep. So that comes out to a total of 5,850 square feet. However, the property also contained a house, which is not container mosquito habitat, except perhaps roof gutters, which it did not have. So we can exclude the house from the total size. The house was 36 feet by 48 feet for a total of 1,728 square feet. With, if we subtract these, we get 4,122 square feet, which is approximately 0.1 acre. So at three gallons per acre, we're gonna be using about 0.3 gallons to treat this property. In the case of this particular property, just about everything around the house was either clearly obvious or suspected container mosquito habitat because we could see the tires, we could see the containers. Where we couldn't see those was dense vegetation that probably harbored some. So in this scenario, our strategy would be to treat the entire property excluding the house. So if you fill the sprayer to a specific point prior to treating this property, and then you measure how much remains after you're done treating it, you should have used 0.3 gallons. We recommend, of course, seven ounces per acre of Vectoback WDG. So we always recommend that people start out with a mix rate that will achieve seven ounces per acre when you use three gallons of total spray per acre. Once you've done that and you treat a property like this, you should always check prior to spraying how much spray mix is in the sprayer. After spraying, how much spray mix is in the sprayer. Do a subtraction and it should come out close to this. If it doesn't, you probably need to recalibrate in order to get to the rate you want to achieve. After you've done this with four or five properties, you're going to start to reach a point where you have a, have a very clear picture of what your mix rate should be based on how much spray volume you're typically using per acre in these residential habitats. One thing that's important is that not all houses are going to have the same extent of container habitat. Let's assume that this house was well taken care of and you only really had in the back here maybe 
an area of potential habitat this wide, some over here around the tree in front, and a little here on the side. So you don't have to, you would not in that case have to treat the entire property. In that case, you would only target these areas of suspected habitat. And in that case, of course, it's much less than the 0 0.3 gallons per acre. So this approach to calibration is somewhat more of an art than a science when we're dealing with these residential lots.